Mr. President, thank you for your gracious words of welcome on behalf of the people of the United States of America. I deeply appreciate your invitation to visit this great country. My visit coincides with an important moment in the life of the Catholic community in America, the celebration of the, of the 200th anniversary of the elevation of the country's first diocese, Baltimore, to a metropolitan archdiocese, and the establishment of the cities of New York, Boston, Philadelphia, and Louisville. Yet I am happy to be here as a guest of all Americans. I come as a friend, a preacher of the gospel, and one with great respect for this vast pluralistic society. America's Catholics have made and continue to make an excellent contribution to the life of their country. As I begin my visit, I trust that my presence will be a source of renewal and hope for the Church in the United States and strengthen the resolve of Catholics to contribute even more responsibly to the life of this nation, of which they are proud to be citizens. From the dawn of the Republic, America's quest for freedom has been guided by the conviction that the principles governing political and social life are intimately linked to a moral order based on the dominion of God the Creator. The framers of this nation's founding documents drew upon this conviction when they proclaimed the self-evident truth that all men are created equal and endowed with inalienable rights grounded in the laws of nature and of nature's God. The course of American history demonstrates the difficulties, the struggles, and the great intellectual and moral resolve which were demanded to shape a society which faithfully embodied these noble principles. In that process, which fought the soul of the nation, religious beliefs were a constant inspiration and driving force, as for example in the struggle against slavery and in the civil rights movement. In our time too, particularly in moments of crisis, Americans continue to find their strength in a commitment to this patrimony of shared ideals and aspirations. In the next few days, I look forward to meeting not only with America's Catholic community, but with other Christian communities and representatives of the many religious traditions present in this country. Historically, not only Catholics, but all believers have found here the freedom to worship God in accordance with the dictates of their conscience, while at the same time being accepted as part of a common will in which each individual and group can make its voice heard. As a nation faces increasingly complex political and ethical issues of our time, I am confident that the American people will find in their religious beliefs a precious source of insight and an inspiration to pursue reasoned, responsible, and respectful dialogue in the effort to build a more human and free society. Freedom is not only a gift, but also summons to personal responsibility. Americans know this from experience. Almost every town in this country has its monuments honoring those who sacrifice their lives in defense of freedom, both at home and at abroad. The preservation of freedom calls for the cultivation of virtue, self-discipline, sacrifice for the common good, and a sense of responsibility towards the less fortunate. It also demands the courage to engage in civic life and to bring one's deepest beliefs and values to recent public debate. In a word, freedom is ever new. It is a challenge held out to each generation, and it must constantly be won over for the cause of good. Few have understood this as clearly as the late Pope John Paul II. In reflecting on the spiritual victory of freedom or totalitarianism in his native Poland and in Eastern Europe, he reminded us that history shows time and again, I quote, that in a world without truth, freedom 
loses its foundation. And a democracy without values can lose its very soul. These prophetic words, in some sense, echo the conviction of President Washington, expressed in his farewell address that religion and morality represent indispensable supports of political prosperity. The Church, for her part, wishes to contribute to building a world even more worthy of the human person created in the image and likeness of God. She is convinced that faith sheds new light on all things, and that the Gospel reveals the noble vocation, sublime destiny of every men and women. Faith also gives us the strength to respond to our high calling and the hope that inspires us to work for an ever more just and fraternal society. Democracy can only flourish, as your founding fathers realized, when political leaders and those whom they represent are guided by truth and bring the wisdom born of firm moral principle to decisions affecting the life and future of the nation. For well over a century, the United States of America has played an important role in the international community. On Friday, God willing, I will have the honor to address the United Nations Organization, where I hope to encourage the efforts, efforts and the way to make the institution an even more effective voice for the legitimate aspirations of all the world's peoples. On this, the 60th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the need for global solidarity is as urgent as ever if all people are to live in a way worthy of their dignity as brothers and sisters dwelling in the same house and around the set table which God's bounty has set for all his children. America has traditionally shown herself generous in meeting immediate human needs, fostering development, and offering relief to the victims of natural catastrophes. I am confident that this concern for the greater human family will continue to find expression support for the patient efforts of international diplomacy to resolve conflicts and promote progress. In this way, coming generations will be able to live in a world where truth, freedom, and justice can flourish, a world where the God-given dignity and rights of every man, woman, and ch child are cherished, protected, and effectively advanced. Mr. President, dear friends, as I begin my visit to the United States, I express once more my gratitude for invitation, my joy to be in your midst, and my fervent prayers that Almighty God will confirm this nation and its people in the ways of justice, prosperity, and peace. God bless America. Thank you, Rolling. That's awesome. Please.